Can you believe we made it to 2022? Every year just kind of seems to be clicking by, right? Especially these last couple of years, they just keep, seem to keep rolling off. And we're always kind of hoping and praying for a new, better year, a better year than the last one, right? That'd be good. And yet every year, it seems to have its own set of challenges, its ups and downs, right? This year seems to keep riding that roller coaster of life, as we call it sometimes. Just when things start to get better, they seem to get worse again. I know, it's tough. But that's not the attitude that I want to go into this new year with. Because if we, if we do, then we're bound to have another one of those years. It's like I usually say when, when you start your day. If you're going to start your day and you wake up and you know you're going to have a rough day, if you start your day and you say, man, this day is not going to be good, guess what? That day is not going to be good. And so I don't want to start off the new year like that either. So I'm not going to waste your time today with all the cliches about New Year's. Because all those things will motivate you maybe for a day or so, but they won't last through the ups and downs of the year to come. Because nothing, and we've learned this, nothing on this earth is stable. The only thing in this life that you will ever find that's stable is God and his beautiful word. And that's what we're here to look at today. So rather than focus on the externals of trying to have a better year. I want to start this New Year's off with a challenge. Because if it's God's word that never changes and doesn't flip-flop with the changing tides of our lives, then you and I must make a commitment this year to dive deeper into his word. To have a better understanding in who we are in Jesus. That way we can ride this roller coaster of life with a new perspective. The perspective of God himself. How do we do this? Well, by diving deeper and learning to live our lives through Jesus Christ. I mean, let's really do this this year. Let's really strive to get better at this. We really need a year like that with a better outlook and a better perspective of the future. I'm calling this series for today only Let's turn the page. I feel like that's a great metaphor for us to starting off this new year. Better than all the behavior changing cliches, ones that never really stick. Together, let's turn the page and jump into this new year, this new season. Ready and expectant for God to continue his work in us. And as we learn to live our lives through his son, Jesus Christ. Last week, we looked at how we need to look back on the previous year. In order to move forward, we needed to take some time to look back at the year and see what God has done. So we don't forget as we come into this new season. Because no matter what you've been through, God is still working and his plan is perfect. And we're to remember these things and not forget them. Because when life kicks in, We all tend to forget what God has done and how good he's been to us. To remember these things as we leave for the day and remember these things as we return for the day into our homes, putting them on the gates and the doors of our houses. And not just the physical gates either. I thought about this after last week. What about the gates of your heart? What about the gates of your heart? What are you letting in and out of your heart this season? Protect your hearts from the things that get in and out. We went from there, and we, that in mind, we followed the lead of the prophet Samuel last week, who raised his Ebenezer for all to see, so that anyone coming to and from the region would ask, hey, what is that? What happened here that you would put that up? Well, they would know and they would remember what God had done for them because of Samuel and what he did. So we unveiled ours for this year, and it'll be hung up soon in the hallways. But now is the time to turn the page and actually move into this new year, to move into this new season. Well, how do you turn the page on a new year and not drag the previous year's challenges along with you? 
Forget about the year. How do we do that on a daily basis? Right? How do you start a new day fresh and not drag yesterday's mess along with you? If you want to talk about turning a page and think about it, when you read a book, it means you're finished with the previous page once you turn that page. You don't normally go back a page or two and dwell on that for a while. It means it's finished once you flip it. Well, we haven't really mastered this in life yet, have we? We've become professionals at moving into a new season while dragging all the previous seasons and this garbage with us. How can we not? It's not like you woke up on January 1st and forgot everything that happened last year. Some of you have been through some tough stuff and some of you even some loss as well. Those are scars you may carry around forever. But there's a difference in carrying around your scars or letting them reign over you in this next season. This isn't the way God calls us to live. This isn't what his design for us was when it comes to progressing and building a stronger faith. That's not what this life is supposed to look like for us. After all, how can you turn the page into this next season if the weight of the things of last season still haunt you? Sometimes we don't even realize we do it. We get caught up in the New Year's traps all the time, right? New year, new me. No, same you. Turning the calendar to a new year really doesn't do anything. If you don't pick yourself up and recognize some things about you, you'll find yourself disappointed pretty quickly. Because the ball dropping New Year's Eve doesn't really, sig it really doesn't signify anything different about you. What does is realizing who you are in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what will change everything for you. And the best news of all, with that fact in mind, is that it can happen January 1st at midnight, or it can happen July 16th at 3 a.m. It's time. Either way, it's time for us to begin to turn the page and live out this life the way God designed us through his son, Jesus Christ. I wanted to start off this new year by encouraging you. Encouraging you to dive deeper this year into your relationship with Jesus. Encouraging you to recognize who you really are in Jesus Christ. Encouraging you to begin to live out your life with this new understanding of who you are in Jesus Christ. That's what's going to make a difference this year. That's what's going to sustain you through life's ups and downs this year. Don't be fooled that the new calendar is going to have less problems. They may not be the same problems as last year, but this year we'll have them as well. So what better way to make this coming year different than to learn to live out your life the way God intended, the way God designed it? As a believer in Jesus Christ, as a child of God, God designed you to live out this life through his son, Jesus after all, that's why he sent his one and only son, so that we can live our lives through him, so that through him we can live out a life as conquerors and not as fearful people. But in order to do that, it has to be more than just a feel-good statement. It has to be more than a bumper sticker or a Christian cliche. It has to be something we can understand to the best of our ability and then put it into action. I want God's word to ignite you, to bring you some excitement this coming year. I want God's word to present you some new opportunities this year. I want God's word to be a deeper part of your life this year so you can keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. I want God's word to penetrate your hearts in a new, fresh way this season. So much so that every time you open up God's word, you find Jesus in it. And every time you open up God's word, you find your place in the big story. God, through his awesome love for us, provided all the directions right here. Let this be the year that we all dig into it further to unpack the message of, like we talked about for the Christmas season, love, hope, joy, and peace. 
Let this be the year we look to God's word more so that we can have a better understanding of what it looks like to live our lives through Jesus Christ. So how does this look for us? I mean, we can look all over the Bible for examples, but I want to keep it simple today. For our new year, I want to keep it simple and focus on one verse. One verse that might be the clearest explanation to help us turn the page into this new year. One verse that will help us understand better what it means to live a life in and through Jesus Christ. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, a very famous verse says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Our desires are to turn the page into a new year. And for those desires to actually produce some results and not just be the same things and struggles as last year, God's word offers us an important reminder, a reminder that once you've established your faith in Jesus, once you've accepted Jesus into your heart, something radical happens. If you've yet to do that in your life, let me just take a side note here. If you've yet to do that in your life, if you've yet to ask Jesus into your life, let me urge you to make this the time to do it. Because if you've yet to do that, then I can almost guarantee you that even with all your earthly efforts, with all your trying, with all your promises to yourself for this year, with, with even your wasted gym membership, whatever it's going to be, that without a loving relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, your life will be the same this year as it was last year and the year before. Because this isn't just a hand-raising kind of, yeah, maybe I'll believe this year. If you're looking for a real life change, if you're looking for a better new year, if you're looking to turn the page on a life that hasn't played out the way you thought it would, then let this be the day you ask the Lord Jesus into your heart and begin to live through him. Because something radical happens when you do that. Let's discover it together today. We see the therefore in our verse. It begins with therefore if anyone is in Christ. Therefore immediately tells us that we have to look backwards at something that was said before. Think of it as because of. So because of, so let's go back. We were to go one back one verse, you'll see another therefore. So we're going to skip all the way back to verse 14. So 2 Corinthians 5, jump back to verse 14. Here we go. For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him for their sake died and was raised. So this is the Apostle Paul, and he's speaking to the church at Corinth. The church of Corinth at the time was going through a period of kind of being pulled away from the things of Jesus. So Paul's writing to them to emphasize and remind them of who they actually are now in Christ. Paul says that he's being persuaded, he's being compelled, he's being moved. That word control he uses there means to hold fast to. Paul says, I'm compelled to reach those for Jesus Christ because the love of Christ compels us or controls us, as our text says, to reach the lost, just like he did for us. Paul's saying, when Christ was here, he did this for us. And Paul says, I can't help but tell you. He says, because if that one, he means Jesus, died for all, all being Jew, Gentile, every creed, every nation, every race. No distinction, he died for all. Everyone has fallen short of the glory of God and needs a savior. We are all in need of his grace and mercy and love. Both you and me, he died for all. So that we might no longer live for ourselves, but as a believer, you now live, and, you live in and through Jesus Christ. That's what he died for. Jesus, out of his great love for you and I, gave up his life for our sakes. Jesus had willingly died for everyone. 
And because of that, you and I who believe in him are dead to our old selves. We should no longer be living for ourselves, but we should be living out of a life with the one who died for it and who saved us. So that verse gets us to our next verse. Chapter 5, still verse 16, says this. From now on, therefore, there's another therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we were once regarded according to, we once regarded Christ to the flesh. We regard him thus no longer. So because of what we just learned, we now learn this, that we are to regard no one according to their flesh, Paul says. We regard no one to the way they used to live. We regard no one to the way they used to live their lives out. Paul says, even though I used to think of Jesus this way, I used to think of him as just another ordinary rabbi who had gone off the deep end. I used to persecute the churches, the churches that followed this Jesus. And even though I once regarded Jesus according to his flesh, I no longer do that. Knowing what we just discovered about him dying for all of us, Paul says we should regard him no longer like that. We should no longer look upon him or think of him that way because he doesn't think of you and I that way anymore either. All of that leads us right back to our verse, verse 17. So let's break it down now while we know the therefores are. Therefore, if anyone, well, who's anyone? Everyone and anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior. The word if can also be translated as since because the word if assumes that the person already believes and knows what they previously read. So therefore, imagine putting the word since in there. Therefore, since anyone, he says, since anyone is in Christ, there it is. If anyone is in Christ, this refers to your position with Jesus. You're not just a follower of Jesus, but you are in Jesus Christ and he is in you. You now have the righteousness of God aligned to you just like Jesus because you are now in him. Think about that. Talk about turning over a new leaf, turning a page to this new year. That's why there's no condemnation in you because there's none in Jesus and you are in him. So Paul continues on. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. He calls us a new creation. As a believer in Jesus, this is an absolutely beautiful way to describe it. The word new here is kainos. The word means recently made, fresh, recent, unused, unworn, unprecedented, uncommon. That's the term that Paul uses to describe your new life as a believer in Jesus. This is the reality of being in Christ. This is the reality of Christ being in you. You are a new creation. Your body might look the same, but something happens when Jesus Christ comes into your life. You are as if you were recently made, fresh, unused, unworn, in your heart, in your mind, and your soul. So what's the byproduct of all this? This, this new creation. Well, Paul goes on. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. This is the reality that's hard for you and I to grasp. This is the reality that presents us from turning the page into the next season sometimes. The old is gone and passed away. The old is gone and no longer available. Notice it says, has passed away. Not that it will pass away slowly or give it some time and you'll forget. Paul says it has passed away. It's already gone. Besides Jesus Christ and his resurrection, nothing, as far as I know, has ever passed away and then still been available. God's word is telling us that not only are you new, a new creation, but your old self is dead. 
And it's so dead, it's not actually even available to you anymore. Part of being this new creation is learning how to live out this life as a new creation. Your old self didn't just pass away and leave you hanging. No, if you watch our verse, here's how it finishes out. The old has passed away. Behold, a new has come. Behold, observe, look, see, pay attention, Paul says. The new has come. This is what's called transformation. A change in your nature, a change in your character. As a believer, you are a brand new person on the inside. The spirit that God deposited in you when you became a believer in Jesus gives you a new life. You're just not the same anymore. You're not reformed. You're not rehabilitated. You're not re-educated. You and I are actually a new creation, living and breathing in union with Jesus Christ. When you become a believer in Jesus, you don't just turn over a new leaf. You begin a new life in Christ. As we face a new year in front of us, we are offered the chance to start fresh. Turning the page to a new calendar doesn't mean that your previous year's concern or troubles are magically gone. But it does mean that we have a fresh start on our outlook for what God has for us each day. As we turn the pages of scripture, we will find hope and our place in the largest story of God. Instead of just committing and making new resolutions this year, instead of committing to turn the page to a new year, new you, maybe we should just commit to turning the pages of the Bible and reading it and ingesting it and living it out. This will be life-changing for you and I. This is what we need to change. We need to change our perspective because this is what will do it. If you really want this year to be different, if you really want this year to be new, then you need to change your perspective to this verse. If anyone, that's you and me, are in Christ, he is a new creation. You and I are new creations. The old has passed away and behold, the new has come. Know and learn and grow in this verse this year. Know and learn and grow in this verse to understand about this new you. Know and learn and grow in this verse so that you can better understand you. You can better understand that the old you is not available anymore. The old way of thinking, the old way of how your heart used to be. None of that is available anymore. Sure, you may struggle with it from time to time because we dig up that stuff. But it shouldn't be a controlling part of your life anymore. That's the difference. You may, you may think while I'm talking about this, but yeah, I still struggle. And I still deal with this. Of course we do. We're human. But God says to us today, that's the old you. We're to put that to bed. It's passed away. There's a new you now as a believer. You're a new creation with a new perspective on who you are in Jesus Christ. If you were to carry that perspective into this new year, you will see the fruit of it come to pass in all of the areas in your life, even the ones you've been praying about for years or dreaming about or making resolutions about. So let's do it. Let's turn the page on this new year. Let's write this verse in our hearts and not forget it. Let's live out our lives in Jesus this year and watch him make a new year, new you. If you really want a new year, new you, that's how we do it. You write this verse on your heart. I'm going to read it one last time. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Don't be fooled that that still controls you. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you are no longer under your old self's control. Behold, 
the new has come. I hope that encourages you for this year. I hope that helps you flip the script, flip the page. It's time to turn the page. It's time for us to dive into God's word deeper. It's time for us to ingest and write this word in our hearts this year. We're gonna be kicking off a new series next week that has to do with wisdom. I can't wait to start off the new year with some new fresh wisdom. We hope to see you next week. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for a verse like this that we can write on our hearts, write on our doorposts, write on our gates, whatever it may be. But thank you that not only did you take away my old self, which just was not working, but you gave me a new self. You call me a new creation. For that, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for that reminder today. We thank you for this season. We, we thank you in advance for what you have already put into place to accomplish in our lives this season. Lord, we love you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.